As an observer of the world, I have to acknowledge that where I'm sitting right now, I am observing the world that we all imagine that can be. A world of harmony, and community, and individuals sharing, and individuals being in love. And I just really would like to say that this was not my life when I started out on all this adventure. Like all of us, we have programs. I had a program to be successful. So I went out to become successful. So I worked and when things didn't work right, I really, it provoked a lot of anger in me because it's like, oh, you're not getting there. Keep working at it and try and bend the world and make it fit and all that kind of stuff. As I mentioned in my talk, it was in this part of my life where spirituality had no relevance. I was a doer. I'm going out there to do something, program to go find that so-called success. It was through the teachings of the most profound teachers I ever sat before to have the opportunity to learn the lessons that were so magnificent that I can't fully put them into words. And who were those teachers? They were the cells that I was working on in a Petri dish, talking to them, watching them day by day, seeing how they live, and then opening to the message. And the message that I got from them was twofold. Number one, they showed me from my point of view and my reference to life that there was something called spirituality that I didn't know existed. And the moment I saw the mechanics of how a signal from the universe comes in to my body suit, my virtual reality suit, and was running this, there was this instant of recognition. I said, oh my God, I can't die. I'm not even in here. That concept of immortality was one of the first and most important lessons I had. Why? Because all of us, when we grew up as children, there was a point of learning that people die and that you are people and that you will do so yourself and your parents will die and your friends and loved ones will also die. And we got so caught up in that. The moment of reality that I couldn't die was the most uplifting experience I could ever imagine because the fear that we are programmed with that you may not say every day, oh, I'm afraid of dying. You don't have to say it. It's built into your subconscious. It's running your life. Every movement you make, every action you take, there's something in your mind that says, how's this going to affect my life? Am, am I going to threaten my life by doing this? Or is uh, another person going to threaten my life? And we get into that. So for me, the truest knowledge I got was not a devotion to spirit. It was an owning of spirit. It was owning it without saying, I think it's this way. I owned it. And the moment I owned it, a weight that I ever knew I was even carrying around <sighs> disappeared because I became free for the first time to recognize I'm here for something other than my life. The cells taught me this as well. And the cells also taught me what I mentioned briefly the other day, the next important fact when you put the two together. And that is that we have been programmed in this world not to love ourselves. We've been programmed to be criticized. We have parents who criticize us. We have teachers who criticize us. We have people all around that criticize us. So what does that mean? Every action you take, there's something back there, the program of critical criticism that says, oh, are you doing it right? Are you doing it right? And then you live by this criticism. When you learn that you're part of spirit as real, then you realize you're a part of everything that is. You're a part of, you want to say, God, God, how can you be critical of God? And all of a sudden I started to realize I cannot lead my life in that critical nature. I'm going to own who I am. I'm a spirit that has come to this planet to experience and to create and to manifest a heaven on earth. And I have now two lives. I have previous learning life, struggle, anger, control, trying to fix everything. And I have post experience, a calmness, an understanding that it's all driven by love. 
Even if other people can't see through their filter of criticism, you're still driven by love. Every one of you is a piece of all that is. Every one of you. And if that critical mind comes up and says, not good enough in any sense, there's a point where you have to stand back and say, that's not me. I am more than the program. And when you let go of that problem of self-criticism, you learn and experience for the first time in your life, self-love. And why is this important? Because as I've learned through years, I could not love the people around me until I could learn to love myself. It was always simple, it was a joke in my head. Somebody say they love me and I go, what kind of quality control do these people have? I can't love me, how can they love me? And I would reject and push away the love because I couldn't own it to accept it. And if I could leave one message behind about love is that you are love. You are a piece of God that came here to create the most beautiful thing in the universe, planet Earth. As we go outside and see nature and the glory of this planet, that's why we can understand how beings from other places are, if anything, jealous not to come here to share in this beauty. So if I could just leave you with this understanding, you came here to create heaven. Other people took away your power by programming you to criticize yourself. Own who you are because then your creative abilities will come forth. And guess what I found out? I didn't have to go out and make it happen. I didn't have to go out and beat the world to find success to bring it in. I just walked out in love and it all came to me. And so recognizing that was a choice. There's a choice to say, do I want to be the filter or do I want to be me? And when you start to recognize me as not just this isolated thing, but me as every one of you joining together as one collective, all that is, the glory of life on this planet cannot be built uh, by anything else in the universe than what you can do here. You are creators. Own your creativity. Own your spirit. It's not words. It's not devotion. It's a true knowledge. You are spiritual. And that is the opening of life. Because when you are spiritual, then you recognize that everything else is spiritual. The indigenous people of the world lived that way. They lived in a garden. They maintained a garden. They lived in that peace. And we need to bring it back. And you represent the community, the seed that spreads that vibration through the world. It's all of you. We are mirrors to reflect who you are. I just wanted to share that because I'm just sharing you with me. And that's who you are. And that's why my life is beautiful because I'm with you. If you like Succeed With Knowledge, subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And thanks a million. Cheers.